what is the value proposition, why should I be choosing this product, where is it available, pricing, dosing. So as much education that you can have within that press release, but in a succinct way, is the most effective way to do it. Hi guys, this is Sid Patel, CEO of Cannabis Drinks Expo and Beverage Trade Network. We are at the second annual Cannabis Drinks Expo in Chicago. I have Rossi here with me. She's one of the leading PR women in America for cannabis and maybe more, right Rossi? Don't believe the hype, but yes, we've been doing this a long time in the space and having a good time at it. Super. So uh, I'll have her actually introduce you properly. Right. Rossi, why don't you just give us a little context about right. what you do? I'm Rosie Maddio, I'm founder and CEO of Maddio Communications. We're the largest, one of the longest running communications agency in the cannabis space. We represent 75 cannabis companies across the supply chain, including many of the beverages that are featured here today. Fantastic. So let's go right there in, you know, what a good PR strategy should look like for, for the brands and we can just help them, you know, craft a nice business plan. Uh, when a client approaches you, right, what kind of questions you ask them? We want to know how they're differentiating themselves, okay. you know, really who their target demographic is, what data they're using, and really what markets they're trying to serve so we can help craft the narrative that's really authentic to the brand, mm -hmm. explains the brand, and gets people really excited and why they should be choosing this brand over another one. Got it. Uh, so let's say we have that done. And now comes the tactical part, you know, where you, you're catching, a, you know, writing a nice headline, good picture. What is a good uh, press release composition look like? You know, like how, how many words it should be, you know, what kind of pictures we should use and the subject headline tips. I would say uh, there are a few things you want to do. Images are really important, mm -hmm. right? So getting lifestyle shots, like how is this product going to be used in market? Like mm -hmm. what are the scenarios in which this beverage or this edible or this product like might fit somebody's lifestyle? So getting lifestyle shots is super important. Okay. We want to keep press releases pretty succinct. Like we never like to have more than 250 to 400 words That's on it. a on a press release. You know, who, what, where, why? Like, what is the value proposition? Why should I be choosing this product? Where is it available? Pricing, dosing. So as much education that you can have within that press release, but in a succinct way, is the most effective way to do it. And I think the way to be really grabby on a headline is. What are you leaning into? Is it a cultural moment? Is it a demographic? Is it a new flavor profile? Like what is new, what is different, and what is going to grab a reader's headline? Um, those are things you really want to take into account when you're putting together a press release. So like what makes this product so different that it deserves to have a press release? Mm, got it. Uh, let's go on the approach, right? Like you have this, uh, everything is done, the materials are ready, and now it's, it's like someone like me just who is not going to use PR company, maybe, let's say, I'm just giving an example. Okay. But uh, an example is someone, a small uh, entrepreneur who doesn't have budget and just doing like 20 emails a day trying to get their cold calling message out to the writers and editors, right? I'm sure you have some yes. comments there. Well, I, you know, I, I love the business. I always say you do not need to hire a PR firm to get good PR. The most important thing you can do is research who the journalist is. What are they covering? What is interesting to them? If they just wrote a story about a beverage, they're probably not going to write another one for a while unless their beat is obviously beverage, right? So find a reporter that might have a tangential type of topic that they're interested in, read what they've been read what they've been writing and what type of tone, what type of stories. And that's the most important thing you can do is really be authentic and research each individual reporter. And a reporter can see right away if you're sending the same pitch to a hundred different True. reporters, they know right away that it's not unique to them. So being super targeted is the best approach and just also using data, right? A lot of the speakers spoke about it today. When a lot of thought goes behind you know, brand building. So as a brand, you probably should know like who your demographic is, mm. what their interests are. And if you can do that, you can really target a PR campaign to those type of interests and a lifestyle, right? Because this is CPG, these mm. are lifestyle brands. So treat it no different than you would a popcorn launch or a soda launch, Got right? It. This is going to be mainstream CPG, use those same traditional tactics, but in a more exciting space. Super. So one question I have is, let's say I I can customize the email. Hey, Adam, I see that you write this article and you, know, you write about chocolates and cannabis. And I think we have a great story for you. I'm just running through a spiel right. here and I think this would interest you. And here's some data that the chocolate and cannabis together is growing the fastest, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. right. Now comes the, Sounds great. You're hired. Okay. Now comes the attachment. Please find my press release. 
attached. Do I have to customize even that again for each? No, because the, the press release is really the who, what, where, and why. That is not your okay. pitch. That's like a FAQ sheet, right? It. It's like that gives you the information. The pitch is really trying to tell the story, right? In the email. In the email. In the email. Hopefully, you can get somebody on the phone, but True. use the press release as just a fact sheet. It's really not where the story is told. That's in the targeted pitch. On that phone part, do people still respect that old call? Like, hey, I'm looking for uh, Lauren. She's a, you know your editor. It's going to be a cold call end of the day, right? Every reporter is your friend. Nobody likes a cold call. I don't like a cold call, but you can sometimes send a text or send an email. Can I give you a call? Like nobody likes to be caught off guard. You know when True. you know the credit card bill comes. You know you don't want that phone call, right? It's the yeah. same thing as a publicist. They don't want to hear from you. Mm. Um, but if you have a good targeted pitch that really piques their interest, you might be able to get them on the phone and really have a fulsome conversation about what the product is and what the launch is. One last one. You got it. The follow up, right? Uh, I've done my twenty thirty things. Haven't heard. So obviously, I'm going to do one more attempt that, hey, Adam, I'm just following up if you got my, I don't know, if there is a good way of follow up, can you suggest? So there is definitely a fair balance on what's too much follow up, what's follow up. Um, I am a firm believer in one follow up. Like, there's no email you don't get. Everybody sees their email. Yeah. They're choosing to ignore it. Sometimes you get busy and you forget to one follow up. Some people in my agency, they follow up a little more, so it really depends. And it's really knowing who the reporter is. Mm -hmm. If they are like, you know, they're super busy and they can be a little absent minded, you follow up more. But for me, it's like one follow up and I mean, that's it. One, yeah. yeah. But what do you, how do you follow up, let's say? You know, what's you a know, good way I, to follow up? I just reply, hey, I sent this email a few weeks ago. Here's why I think it'd be interesting to you. Um, would you be available for, you know, a longer conversation? Very simple. Also, like, no long emails. Like, I would say 90% of my pitches are, hey, XXX. Thought you'd be interested in this for this reason. Nobody's reading three paragraphs, and if they are reading it, it's sort of they can tell it's canned, right? So short, sweet, and to the point. That's mm. how we live. That's the lifestyle we live now. People want their information like this. So I think the pitch should really mirror that as well. And do you think sometimes, personally, I mean, when I'm doing our PR activities uh, for other events as well, uh, I normally write like, "Hey, uh, you know, we're looking for some advertising as well, or some little thing where I'm open to pay okay. to play game as well." Right. You know, uh, but at the same time, I'm thinking sometimes it may bite back or sound rude if I just write that, you know, I'm looking to spend money. Yeah. So those are two different. They A good um, media outlet really separates paid and earned, okay. right? Like if you say to like a reporter, like we advertise in your magazine, they might never talk to you again because oh, that's yeah. like saying like, well, you owe me something. Uh, earned media and paid media are totally different. And there's places for both of them. You know, we do paid media also. There is definitely a time and place for paid, but you can't really cross boundaries. So for boundaries. the paid guys, you would advise to go on <laughs> the go advertising the page, content. And then that, uh, very separate. Yeah, they don't uh, like, the reporters are trying to think you're doing a quid pro quo and it will turn them off. Mm, cool. Any final tips for, you know, people out there trying to yeah. get PR out? I, I think, you know, just some basic things are, you know, think creatively, really have a story not just you know pitching a product have amazing packaging and um, like give packaging obviously mm. packaging should be a part of your amazing mm. brand but like have a really really unique sort of like sampling a program uh use data and just be authentic right like journalists are people just like we are and like treat them like humans mm. and that is like part of the game it's just really building relationships and if you can have a real authentic relationship take interest you know reach out to a reporter when you don't need something say i read this story of yours i thought it was great and x y and z mm. really build relationships you know if you're a real person mm. and that's that's part of like when we hire we want like people like really care about the product really care about the job and it comes across in the work and that's really important super thank you very much right.